Trump campaign is now reaching voters online. You are seeing the president of the United States. Look at the lines. You join our movement. A lot of uh, President Trump supporters here. Greatest movement in the history of our country. The most racist thing a person could tell me is that I'm supposed to choose something based on my race. You ain't black. Joe Biden has never been a friend to African Americans. Hello, and welcome to the first episode of what we call Truth Over Facts. China lied to us. They destroyed test kits. They lied to their own people. There, since Ronald Reagan, we haven't had a president more engaged and more involved in the Western Hemisphere than this administration, and it's been a great partnership to work with them on. Well, you've heard of The View, but welcome to The Right View. And with us today is the Motor City Madman, Ted Nugent, because this isn't your typical political show. It's the most important election in our lifetime. Joe Biden, who has a dismal record of economic failure and absolutely terrible ideas for the future. Oh, uh oh, I'm in trouble. We are one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. We will make America great again. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Faith in America, Evangelicals for Trump. My name is Mercedes Schlapp, and I'm senior advisor for President Trump's campaign. It is a great honor to be with you tonight, but also to be joined by three dynamic faith leaders who are part of the Ev Evangelicals for Trump advisory board. So let me introduce these great women. We've got Pastor Paula White, spiritual advisor for President Donald J. Trump. Paula, thank you for joining us. So great to be with you, Mercedes, and of course, my dear friends, uh, Dr. King and Sissy. So it's going to be a great night. It is going to be a great night. It's great to have these women of faith all joining us together uh, to be able to talk about these issues that matter so greatly to our nation. Of course, the legendary Dr. Alveda King, a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, a civil rights activist, and former state house representatives for Georgia. Alveda, thank you again for joining us. It's wonderful to join my America's sisters in Christ. <laughs> that's right, that's Hello. right. And then of course we have Sissy Graham Lynch, a ministry spokesperson for Samaritan's Purse and the Billy Graham Evangelis Evangelistic Association. Uh, Sissy, thank you for being here. I know you're here on your personal time. We greatly appreciate you joining this uh, very wonderful conversation. Oh, I'm excited to be here tonight with three women that I look up to and to be able to talk about faith and politics in America through things I love. It's gonna be a wonderful night. So let me ask you, Sissy, where are the kids? Are they like, did you, are they hiding somewhere? Mine, mine are, I, I, it's been quiet in the Schlapp household, I have to say. Well, there's been some tricks I've had to figure out during all this uh, quarantine time and you're doing interviews. Um, they have been known to be in my car watching a movie. <laughs> I live on a farm, so it's safe. Nobody's going to come safe. up to them. But you have to be creative during this time as working mamas. There's no question. Uh, Dr. Alveda King, if you would start with prayer for today. Sure will. And I have always a couple of little bars of a little song. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We just want to thank you, Lord. Lord, we are gathered together for a beautiful conversation we are welcoming America to join us on this beautiful Saturday evening. Lord, we thank you first for just letting us live in America where we have a president who says we do not worship government, we worship God. So we join our prayers to that heart of prayer that comes from President Trump straight out of the White House, Lord, all over America. We're in our own environments, we're still 
somewhat sheltered in, but we are sheltering in, in you. As we shelter in and then return into our nation, we know that faith is strong, hope is rising, and love always prevails. And so, Father, any difficulties that we face, we face together. Bless our president, his family, the cabinet, everyone associated. Bless all Americans and people all over the world. So with faith in America, with hope and love, Lord, we just continue in you. In the name of Jesus, glory to God by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. That, thank you, Dr. King. That was just beautiful. And it's so right. Faith is so strong right now. I think all of us are going through a, a difficult time. We've all been impacted by the coronavirus pandemic. And thank God for President Trump uh, being in power, leading this nation right now, being guided by God. Uh, to ensure that he has the wisdom and the courage to take the necessary steps to ensure that Americans are safe, that we are protected, and at the same time that we're able to get back to work, that we're able to reopen the country. Uh, the president has focused with his administration on ensuring that we flatten the curve. Uh, we know now that hospitals have the resources they need to deal with any sort of outbreak uh, that would happen uh, or that has happened in their cities. The, the federal government has responded quickly, working closely uh, with the private sector, working closely with our churches to ensure uh, that, uh, that people are getting what they need, that American families are getting the immediate relief that they need to get through this pandemic together. But there was such a major announcement that was made uh, last week uh, that I want to share with you. And this is President Trump recently announcing the CDC guidelines that would declare houses of worship an essential business that would provide essential services. This is so critical for our communities, for our religious communities. So first of all, I want to play a clip and want, I'd like to get your reaction to this. One of the other things I want to do is get the churches open. The churches are not being treated with respect by a lot of the Democrat governors. I want to get our churches open, and we're going to take a very strong position on that very soon. And that was President Trump addressing the media about the importance of getting our churches, churches reopened. Pastor White, you're with the president. You talked to the president. Why was this important for the president to move forward and issue these CDC guidelines to ensure that our houses of worship are reopened quickly? On so many different levels. Number one, he's correcting the injustices. And I know we'll talk more about this because there are a lot of injustices. But President Trump really understands the heart of when how important faith is to us as people, us as families, to the nation. He is a man of great and deep faith himself. And he understands that when faith and business and government come together, you're going to have the best. As Alveda said, he always is saying, we worship God, not government. And it's so important because especially in pandemics, crisis, trauma, um, you have to have a core of really Faith is so essential. Houses of worship are probably the most important thing that there is to our entire nation right now. And um, we'll talk about how some of these injustices and what that one thing did. I mean, Mercedes, I have been on with over a thousand six hundred and something pastors individually during this pandemic, and they could not wait. I think Tony Perkins. Uh, his uh, said that 64% said that immediately people would go back to church when the when the doors were open. We just did a big polling with 95,000 congregants. It's over 70 something percent of people said they'd go back as soon as it opened because faith is at the heart of people and it's vital. That's an excellent point. Uh, Sissy, let me ask you, I mean, what was your reaction when the president uh, issued these guidelines basically saying that church is an essential service, that it is an essential business. What did this mean to you and to your community? I mean, first off, I'm just thankful that we have a president that will take that stand. But do we ask, like, are we really in a time in our country where that is a debate? And can you imagine if we didn't have a president that wouldn't take that stand? 
And that could be a possibility one day. And how thankful I am for President Trump to take a stand to recognize, like uh, Paula said, that we worship God, not government, and that how churches are essential. You know, it's not just, uh, you know, during this quarantine time, the anxiety, the stress that's been in people's homes, and that faith in America, that's been the central core of our, um, our existence in America. And I'm thankful for our president to take that stand. And Dr. King, I mean, prayer, I think, I mean, you can feel it. You can feel it in your in your family, in your community. I know for our family, I've got five girls. We sit down, we pray together constantly. And I think that there is this sense of how do we get this to get, get through this as a nation? Uh, so, I, I mean, in, in, in what President Trump has done in terms of his actions, how has your community responded to the president's boldness in saying, you know, we're going to let people of faith go back to churches, despite the fact that you still have Democrat governors really slow walking, uh, opening up, reopening up the churches. I think it's absolutely amazing. President Trump in strength and in humility. We don't worship government. We worship God. Don't worship me, people. Worship God. Get back to your churches. Pray. Work through your churches in your community. That's awesome. For a leader of the United States, as a statesman and a leader, to say that. And so people, I don't trust him. He said he was going to do this. He just told you, we don't worship government. We worship God. In our own community, for example, and I have heard, and I have to verify this, I'm not sure, but there are some people who really don't even have a bank account or can't get a PPP or can't get a check through their bank account. And so there have been other ways for them to even get that emergency help right away. And so there are all types of things coming out of the White House and out of America to help us. And yet the churches are there. And if you close the church down, you miss some much needed assistance. My own church in Atlanta, I attend Believer's Bible Christian Church. We followed all the CDC guidelines. We were on Facebook, 10 people or less in the sanctuary preaching and singing and watching it, we had parking lot church Sunday because Georgia was one of the early openers, right? We were in the parking lot, just dance and jump and pray that I watched you in your parking lot, Father. <laughs> Pastor Paul, it was powerful, you know? So we are doing that. But along with that, our church, just like you, Pastor Paul, I saw that I've been following you and giving out other things that people need. Yeah. And so our parking lot is open during the week following the guidelines, drive through. But you can get drive through prayer. You can get a box or a bag of food, uh, even, even a little clothing, perhaps, and those types of things. And our church sometimes gives out gift cards to the grocery store or to a little restaurant, little gift cards. So the church with prayer, prayer first, the word of God first. But I, Jesus said, if you have to feed the people, they're going to get weak. And that's fishing the loaves. Well, who has the fish in the loaves? The church does. So we're doing that here. We are trusting in the Lord, following the wisdom that he gives our president. And that's very, very important. Well, let's remember that the that for liberals uh, and for the left, far left, their church is the government. Mm -hmm. And we don't believe in that. We yeah. believe in God first in, in empowering us as individuals and yeah. being able to spread the word of God uh, to others to make sure that they are strong in their faith. Uh, yeah. So, Paula, you've talked yeah. about that. Let's talk about a little bit of, you know, t let's dig deeper into that. Well, you know, you're so right. And this is so crucial because I actually believe we're fighting for the very heart and soul of our nation right now. When we look back at our forefathers who came to this country and put those white crosses on Plymouth, they dedicated America to preach the gospel around the world. And God truly has blessed America. We have never been here. It's unprecedented. It is a true fight between darkness and light. And I believe that people of faith are rising up and recognizing with spiritual eyes and ears to see and to hear um, that God has put in what some might call a disruptor. That President Trump is a disruptor. He's not a man of the system, but he is a man that I believe has been planted by God there. He has stood for religious liberties more than any other president. I mean, we can look prior to COVID. We can see the fight for religious liberty first at the UN to ever speak on religious liberty, to start the ministerial religious liberty 
Alliance, um, the Hobby Lobby case, Little Sisters of the Poor. We can just look on and on and on at what all he has done. Uh, the Johnson Amendment, we can talk about how he's removed regulations and restrictions because the church, honestly, I mean, there was such defense for years and years, people in fear, like, are we going to have this unrighteous attack on us? And this is what we are seeing manifest and come to the forefront. So we are seeing uh, predominantly Democrat governments, and it's not trying to say like this is all Democrat, but it is just what it is that are putting these uh, in just, and I really want to get to the heart of this, things like if you look at Minnesota, Open the Mall of America, Home Depot, Lowe's, thousands of people, but only 10 people can still gather in a church. If we look at California, what Newsom has done, if we look at, I mean, if we go back and see Mississippi and see how people were fined, congregants were fined sitting in the car with their windows rolled up, fined $500, how uh, Northam has been in Virginia. But here, here is the heart of this, all right? We don't know the motivation of these government. No one knows the heart of a person except for God. But A, either number one, that they are so anti-church and so full of their own power, and as you said, worship government as their God, or if they truly maybe believe that they are protecting people, which statistically doesn't even line up in so many states, which we'll get to about how so many more people are committing suicide in California than even have died from the COVID because of all of this. But when you look, maybe they really believe that they're protecting and, and with this overreach, what they are not recognizing is how essential, this, this shows the disrespect for faith that shows the disrespect for God in a person's life, the freedoms that were fought for. And what it's the heart of this, the injustice of this, is that it truly is unconstitutional because it's discrimination and it's discriminatory. And there's discrimination against people of faith. And no one, if you're in ministry, <laughs> listen, you don't go into ministry because it's easy. It's because you've been called by God. That's it's right. because you love people, because you have the heart of a shepherd, because you have the heart to love people. No one is going to take better care of people than the church, than pastors. They're going to take better care than, than a department store or than a grocery store or than a liquor store. I mean, we look at all this, the heart, as Alvita said, we're going to take every precaution. We're going to make sure people are safe. But we know people. We love people. And thank goodness we have a president who, who stands for religious liberty. He has heard the cry of the American people. I mean, it was like, I have literally Mercedes that when he announced it, I was sort of running around my house shouting. I was like, yes. I know, it was remarkable. It was truly remarkable. And what I find interesting, Pastor White, and is that Joe Biden has been silent on this issue. Yeah. Has not, there has been silent. He has not spoken up for people of faith. So. Sissy, I want to go to you on this question. You're seeing these Democrats, you've seen Joe Biden, really uh, just almost like fear monger and really not in any way stand up for the, you know, the pastor in Mississippi. We're seeing obviously these cases that are coming, you know, where you have the U.S. Department of Justice telling Governor Newsom that you all are going way too far, that you must do more to accommodate in, uh, accommodate in-person religious gatherings. So what is it with these liberal governors in terms of their slow walking, the op reopening of these churches? Yeah, I think we, as uh, Paula touched on, we're following an administration that opened up the floodgates to the persecution of religious rights and to religious liberties. Yeah. And we are in the aftermath of the Obama administration, of the court cases we're seeing at the Supreme Court. And that's when I think a lot of people came to vote for Donald Trump in 2016 uh, based on the Supreme Court. But what we've looked, what he's done in the, um, the lower courts is historic, where he's put 193 judges. The Democratic Party has become so anti-God and so secular in their attacks against um, those people of faith. And I look at what they're doing now and how thankful I am a president. The other day when he said churches were essential, he also said, we need more prayer, yeah. not less. That's right. He did say you know, that. how thankful I am. We're in a time that the Democrats are mocking prayer. 
Yeah. Um, we've seen that from like Cory Booker and many other people and news anchors, CNN, all that. And they mock prayer and how thankful I am that, you know, we have a president that will take a stand and say, no, we need more prayer, that he looks for God to wisdom right. in this country. And when you have Joe Biden sitting in his basement, you know, and it's just attack after attack after attack on the president during a crisis. Yeah. You know, it's been beautiful to see this country come together and unified. It was a much needed change after years of division. And the country came together. They came together to do, even the churches did their part to flatten the curve. Yeah. And what um, Biden has done from his basement to attack the president, one thing after, with no solution, he's not offering a solution from there. This country, I think, is welcoming the change of unity that we have seen where we've all come together. And just want to get your reaction here as well. The, so what I find interesting is I do find that the Democrats, many of them, really feel like the people of faith. It's like it's like the Obama model, right? It's a clean to your guns and clean to your Bible and clean, you know, and it's this whole concept that people of faith are almost like ignorant to a certain extent and or uneducated. And I find that to be so insulting yeah. In, in who we are as people, where we depend on our faith and in and, and, and basically being the, the fundamental foundation of you know, my life and, and our family's life. So I, I want to take this over to you, Dr. King. We just saw recently uh, Joe Biden make despicable comments about uh, the black community and basically ba saying, you know, you ain't black if you're voting for Donald Trump. I mean, how insulting is that? To, uh, to, to the black community? Well, very interestingly, and you all have heard me, Acts 1726, of one blood, God yeah. created all people to live together on the face of the earth. So we're not separate races. Skin color does not define an ethnic community. Mm -hmm. You can see it, and we're not colorblind, we can see each other but we are one human race. And that's how I knew immediately uh, President and candidate Trump. Hey, we all believe the same. So he, I said, he gets it. He's not colorblind. He knows we all believe the same. Blood is red. He gets it. So that was just so exciting for me as part of his promises made, promises kept. He keeps that. So I'm tenderly connected to two downtrodden communities, really three. The skin color issue that we did in previous centuries. Oh, you're black, so you're not the same. Women at one time were very oppressed in America. And so the suffragette movement. And then more and more increasingly after 1973, the little babies in the womb. All of us have to be regarded simply and truly as human beings. And I more recently, elderly people have been oppressed, you know. So I'm real, it's hitting me on all fronts. So we all believe the same. Yes, President Trump, you're right. First, we are human beings. We are Christians. We are Americans. And we live on the planet. So when Joe Biden said, basically, if you don't know who to vote for, if you ain't vote, if you're not voting for me, you ain't black. So excuse me, ladies, for a minute, I went back a little bit and I say, yes, I is black. <laughs> I made English. I know. Yes, I am black. I know. But <laughs> I went there for a moment and I was so I, it was unbelievable. Yeah. Black people, keep your vote in one place. If you don't vote for me, then that's abortion. Locking up people unjustly and destroying generations of families. You ain't black. Well, it doesn't matter what color my skin color is. I'm human. I'm very glad to be connected to the African-American community. That's my heritage. I was with Pastor Paul in the Rose Garden, religious freedom. Yeah. I Kind of that same case, the Little Sisters of the Poor, the civil rights for the unborn. So civil rights, justice belong to everyone. And this is a season of jubilee. I believe it. And I thank God that President Trump is in there with the White House open to prayer. And this, this is time for that shift. I really believe it. Let's go uh, to one more question, Pastor White. 
you know, I find that the Joe Biden identity politics is what the Democrat Party lives on. It's what they build their political strategy right. on. And I think it's so destructive. And so, you know, here we are trying to unify the country during this pandemic. Um, what are your thoughts about that, of how President Trump has been able to unify our country and really stay focused on, on the issues that matter that impact all Americans? Well, first off, you see uh, the fruit of President Trump is by his policy, and his policy is the best for all people. And I, I just, I mean, there's not enough that we can say. We look at before the COVID-19, you look at everything that he's done for all people, for women, for Hispanics, for Blacks, for I mean, millennials for absolutely everyone. You see the roaring economy, you see the job unemployment. And if anyone can bring it back, President Trump will bring it back. You see religious liberty, you see prison reform, you see mental health care, you see opioid, you see a uh, strong stand on our borders and protecting Americans. You see him getting us out of these horrific deals that prior presidents put us in that America was be being pillaged. I mean, our hard taxpayer dollars going to things. And I I know we'll talk about pro-life, but things like Mexico City abortion, $9 billion of tax, of tax money going to foreign abortions. I'm in a, a tax bracket that I, I just cringe when I think like I pay my taxes to do what? You know, and, and it just, it, the list goes on and on. And President has been a freedom fighter for all people. Um, this identity politics, I, I'm glad you've said that because what Biden said was extremely arrogant, extremely offensive. I pastor predominantly 90% black church, black Hispanic, um, few Caucasians, et cetera. I have been in ministry for 36 years. Uh, I've done so much work within the inner city from back in Rodney King days, living in Los Angeles, Jordan Downs, Wyverly, Nickerson Garden, et cetera. And it, it is the playbook of the Democrats. It's the playbook. It's like, we own this, we own that, and here you have to. Well, I think America is waking up that you can't tell us how to think, um, what we have to do. It, it, it's so degrading. Um, you have to be like this because you're a Christian. You have to be like this because you're uh, a female. And, you know, we don't deny that there is true racism, but uh, these implicit biases and, and what Biden has done is, is arrogance at its epitome and God calls that pride and it's not a good thing. And so I actually pray, I pray because I want people to uh, know the Lord. I want people to come to know him. Um, I pray that those veils get removed and uh, people don't sell their soul to a place of that kind of darkness. I really do, because it, it was very offensive and it's time that we open up our eyes for all people, the good of all people. And that's what President Trump has done. Just look at the fruit of it. I mean, you can't say all these thousands and millions of people that are following him. Right. I mean, when I look, I, I, I know I need to stop, but when I look at- No, it's- <laughs> looking, Keep going, keep going. Keep going. Watching General Flynn and I'm thinking, does, I'm just screaming from the top of my lungs going, does anyone care that they just like destroyed this man's life? to destroy President Trump, which is really about destroying the millions of people that voted for him, which also is destroying almost the sacredness of the office of presidency. I'm like, please, uh, God, wake us up, bring us up into a revival and let these veils be removed and let people who just, oh, that's politics. No, COVID has taught us something. Politics affects every one of our lives on a very real and very personal level. And so I just believe, uh, my heart believes, I still believe in the best of humanity. I believe that people are free thinkers, that they'll see truth for what it is. Maybe some people have a hard time with some of uh, President Trump's uh, New Yorkish or his harshness or, you know, don't like everything he says. That's okay. I mean, my husband probably doesn't like everything I say, but we're still married and <laughs> we make it work and we learn how to walk in forgiveness and get along. You know, that, nice. that's, that's life, right? But Amen. there's some real battles we're facing. You're so right, Paula. Uh, you know, we're going to take a quick break right now, but you are watching Faith in America. So stay with us.
a beautiful history we wrote together. China is not our problem. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Thanks to President Trump, criminal justice reform gave nonviolent offenders a second chance at life and the American dream. He has given $100 million to HBCUs for scholarships and research. And he has done all this for us in less than one term. Imagine what he can achieve with four more years. I'm Donald Trump and I approve this message. Welcome back to Faith in America. I'm joined by Pastor Paula White, Dr. Alveda King, and Sissy Graham Lynch. Thank you all again for staying with us. How are you all doing? Doing great, Very wonderful. Good. Well, we were having, uh, I think, a very passionate discussion about uh, how liberal governors have restricted uh, churchgoers from congregating in their in their churches, and this has become a huge problem uh, throughout the country. And it's really under President Trump that he has said that our houses of worship are essential businesses with essential services. Uh, but what we also know is that our Christian organizations play a critical role in providing relief to American families who are struggling during this pandemic. So let's start with you, Sissy, on what you all are involved in to ensure uh, that American families are getting what they need during this difficult time. Yeah, Mercedes, once again, I think what I said earlier is that it's been really beautiful to see people come together and be unified. You're seeing neighbors be neighbors and communities being communities and coming together in creative ways to serve one another. And that's where you've seen churches as Christians, we're to go to the front lines of the battle. We don't recede, we don't hide, we go and we serve those in their greatest need. And that's what my dad has taught me my entire life at Samaritan's Purse, that we go to the front lines and we serve right there at the fire and help people in need. And I love to see how people, the uh, church where my children go to school, they've had a food drive and distributing. Everybody in, has gotten involved in their own communities. And it really has been beautiful at Samaritan's Purse. You know, many people we've seen our hospital was in Central Park in New York City. That is now back. Our hospital from uh, Italy is back in North Carolina. We're getting ready to deploy a hospital to Alaska. Um, that right now is low in cases, but they're expecting an outbreak as their commercial fishing industry is getting ready to open up. My dad was uh, just met with the Navajo Nation to see how they can help respond and help those people. So this is what Christians do. We are to yeah. serve the community. And we've done that, the, the history of the church uh, has done that throughout time. And we've seen that in history and we have not stopped. That's what we are called to do. And it's been beautiful to see everybody in their community serving. Dr. King, uh, your, what, you, what have you seen in your community in terms of response coming from our Christian organizations? Wonderfully, I have friends with dual citizenship. Some from Africa and America, they live here. And I got a call the other day and they were working to raise some money, not people here in their own congregations, this was a pastor, but also in their second home. And so I, I, my ministry, Alveda King ministry was able to help with that. And that worked out very well. At the church that I've attended for over 30 years in Atlanta, Believer's Bible Christian Church, there's tender outreach to the seniors because we are finding out many of them are in these facilities and dying at a large higher rate of COVID-19 and it's with other complications. Believe it or not, some of those complications, the opposite of faith, fear. Mm. And when yes. their <laughs> body reacts with that fear. And so comforting those who are shut in, sending special packages to the senior citizens in our church who can't get out and come and pick up something. And then we are a community church. And so we have boxes of food and things like that and drive through prayer at the same time. So you drive through for prayer and you get your body. If you don't want to pray, you can still get the food. That's okay. But to offer to the spirit, soul, and body all together. 
is something that we're doing in our communities, my own ministry, Alveda King uh, Ministries, and I work for a Catholic organization, Priest for Life. They are doing, Father Frank is doing mass online at 10 o'clock every day. I'm not Catholic, but sometimes I tune in. He preaches like a Baptist preacher anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's this so true. Spirit, soul, and body is very important. Can, can I tell you, Pastor White, I love your tweets. If you all, seriously, if you don't follow Pastor White, every t time, if I feel a little bit down, I'll just go to Twitter. I mean, you've got Donald Trump's tweets, and then you've got Pastor White's tweets. That's right. I'll and follow. they're so inspirational that I am always like, all right, we got to we gotta keep on with the fight. We got to, you know, look to the Lord to be our refuge. It's just so, I want to, I think you're you're really been dynamic in being able to share uh, you know, and really help people stay strong during this during this time as well. It is so true, Mercedes. And I know we're going to talk so much more about what the president's doing. But this time, I've always kind of looked at our ministry and what God's called me to do is bring spiritual truths that transform people. And that word of encouragement helps as well as uh, like Sissy and Alveda, we have just at our, we live in Apopka, Florida, which is about 40 minutes outside of Orlando. It's a community of a little over 30,000 people. And we have literally, from the time of March 16th through May 24th, distributed 335,791 pounds of food just That's through awesome. our church, um, touching 27,321 family households. We've also become a point of distribution for 20 other churches in our local area area. We have picked up prescriptions for the elderly. We've partnered with people like World Vision, CityServe, Cisco, Costco, uh, Second Harvest. We've had $180,000 kind in goods where uh, people have donated that we've been able to take to and transition families from homelessness to homes. And those goods that we've been able to do their houses, we've been in every single homeless shelter, we've been in every domestic abuse shelter, we've been in every human trafficking shelter, we have a 24-hour prayer line that is so important to people because this time we've also trained our leadership through a program called Dare to Care under Dr. Tim Clinton, how to be mental health care uh, Christian providers and they literally get a certificate to be able to help people during these times of stress and anxiety and the problems that we're facing. So you'll see some people think church Church is just about going on a Sunday morning. Church is seven days a week, 24 hours a day. We, it, it's not like, you know, time off. You know, this yeah. is not what we do. It's who we are. In, in today's world, there is no time off. You got to pray all the time. <laughs> Amen. So uh, let me, what, I want to talk about what President Trump has done and what the administration has been able to do. So Ivanka Trump has partnered with USDA, uh, with Secretary Sonny Perdue, uh, to come up with a program that they just launched. It's called Farmers to Families Food Box Program. And basically they would take, the federal government would buy meat, produce and dairy products from the farmers and ranchers and to local distribution centers. And then they pack up those boxes and uh, deliver to those people in need. I wanna show a quick clip from the president when he launched when he announced this program. So that's a lot of money. You're talking about a total of 16 billion plus 3 billion. And you know, uh, we uh, bought last week, and it's already in distribution, $3 billion worth of product for the food lines. And it's, uh, is this already in distribution? I see that they're handing it out. I see where they couldn't get food. They're having a hard time. And we have these incredible ranchers and farmers that have so much food. And I said, let's spend that money and give it to our farmers, our ranchers. And it's worked out really well. I love this president because he is he thinks so out of the box all the time. Uh, so let me Sissy, let me go to you. I mean, you were someone who supported the president early on. And what was it about President Trump that you're like, you know what? We're going to support him. We're going to back him up and we got to bring other evangelicals along to to support this president. Well, I was an early supporter um, early on with President Trump. But what I loved that was his transparency. You know, when it came to the Supreme Court judges, bam, he gave a list, uh, his stance on life and religious freedom. But what I love, and these women can, and you, Mercedes, can attest, for a man at his caliber, he will listen to anybody in the room. Sure. And he will take what they right. say 
and he'll hear their advice and might take a couple backs or a couple days to think about it, but he'll always get back to you. He will listen to everybody's ideas and how thankful I am for that. But I think for many people, it, like I said earlier, for some evangelicals, it came down to the Supreme Court. And boy, did he keep his promise. Promises made, promises kept. He did that with moving the embassy to Jerusalem when it came to Israel. He's taken that stance on life, religious liberty, and the judges. And I think we've seen, that's why it is so important. Elections are so important and elections matter. And this one coming up is gonna be bigger than the 2016 because there's so much at stake right now. And with the Democratic party so far left, so secular, so anti-God, but we have a president, as Paula White said earlier, he's a disruptor. You might not like what he has to say sometimes, but let me tell you, I've always said, I like somebody to say what they're thinking. You don't have to guess what they're saying, right? Like. He's going to tell you, and I'm so thankful for that, that he is bold enough to take a stand against those in Washington. And when these lower courts, what matters is we've seen in the last couple of weeks, like we saw in North Carolina with the governor there, the same thing with the churches. There was a judge in place that, you know, he was able to interpret the law differently on the freedom of worship and to overrule the governor there. And when he's put all these judges in place here, that changes the generation for my children, that these are life appointments. And Mercedes, you just asked me what it was. I can remember sitting on the couch watching that last debate between Hillary Clinton and President Trump and that um, segment that she talked about abortion and that late-term abortion. I couldn't believe we are sitting there debating late-term third or third-term abortion um, in this country, this genocide that we have faced. And it was it was grotesque, it was sick. And he called it for what it was right in front of her. And I'll never forget that. So I voted, I went to the polls unapologetically voting for Trump, thinking of my children and the next generation and what he's done in the court system has changed that for my children for the next 30 years. Well, I gotta tell you, I'm looking so forward to the Joe Biden um, six feet apart debate from President Donald Trump because I don't think Joe Biden stands a chance. <laughs> I mean, I don't know about you, Pastor White, but I mean, watching Joe Biden talk from the basement just without really having a comprehensive vision for America, not standing up for life. You know exactly where he's going to go in terms of your point, Sissy, in terms of judges. I mean, how detrimental is that to our country? You know, I, I want to jump in here, Mercedes, and just say a few things. Uh, I think when they get in debates, we'll be able to finally find out who Joe Biden is because uh, he won't define himself and he's all over the map. And and I think these debates are going to absolutely define uh, when he's called to the carpet of how can you go from being a Catholic pro-life to now you're okay with late-term abortion, like like Sissy said, with Northern saying it, not just moments before the birth, but after the birth, you can execute this baby. So this is a huge issue. It should be to every single person. I want to go back to families, uh, uh, farmers to families, and show why it's so important, because President Trump is a solutions president. And something very unique about him is that he is not only about, you typically have presidents that are justice, you know, they're about pro-life and this and that, they're about just causes. Or you have presidents that are about social. Um, President Trump is about both. When you're taking a, an issue like farmers to family, there are people that are that have lost their job due to this COVID. You no, know, I'm millions of people. And like I said, if anyone will get this economy back, it will be President Trump. We believe that. We know that. But there are people that are hungry and no child should go to bed hungry. So what did he do immediately? Three billion dollars for our distressed farmers. Now, let me explain to you what this is on just a ground level. That means every state, every county is working. They brought these people who applied for the grants that became the suppliers. This is the most nutritious boxes. I've actually seen them. I've been a part. I've touched them. I've helped distribute them. Um, you're looking at dairy, at meat, at produce. It's very similar to SNAP program. So it's nutrition. It's not just, oh, here's a few bottles of water and here's a few chips. It is things that that families would not be able to survive, eat, have health, I mean, go to bed hungry, et cetera. 
there's one church in Dallas that we saw this past weekend, uh, New Beginnings, and they, so you had all, uh, never before has this happened because he's using the houses of worship, over 384,000 to do that last mile. So the, the farmers got it, the suppliers packaged it, put everything together. Then an unprecedented coalition was founded. That coalition included your largest uh, not-for-profits like World Vision, City Serve, Mercy Chefs. I mean, it just goes on and on. Rescue Mission, etc. They all came together, not paid a dime, not paid a dollar, anything. And they mapped out the United States, got this into the hands of houses of worship that know how to get it to the people that need it the most. Now, that is huge. When you know what it is, uh, my father died when I was five years old, and we went from wealth, wealth to poverty, poverty. And I'd go some days, two, three days without eating, and I'd, I'd literally have, they'd call it spaghetti noodles with ketchup on it and, and fight over a little bowl with my brother. And remember just crying myself to sleep. Um, my father had committed suicide. And those feelings never leave you, That, that those moments. And I've been blessed, um, I've worked hard, I've overcome a lot of things, but my passion is not only, yes, let's do what the Bible says, that's my conviction to take care of the poor and needy, but you'll never forget when you've been seared with trauma like that. And President Trump, though he's, not had a night probably where he didn't have to go to bed without food. He cares like he did. He cares like he's been in that place. And he makes sure that the most vulnerable are taken care of. And we're watching by the end of this week, we will have over 1.5 million boxes into, into people's hands who are very, very hungry and that would not otherwise be fed. So I'm so grateful for all that he's doing. And I just want to go back to that families or that farmers to family program because it was huge. And that's just one thing that we could talk about what President's I'm, doing. I'm so glad you brought that up. And just real quick, Dr. King, I love that idea of the president being a solutions president. Dr. Mm -hmm. King, your thoughts on that. Can I give you really quick a timeline? 1963, prayer was taken out of schools. That was the same year, Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech, by the way, but prayer was taken out of school. 10 years later, abortion became legal in America. All these were liberal moves, you have to think yes. about. A few years later, late 70s, early 80s, pay the farmers not to farm. Tell them to stop farming. Let's divert that money somewhere in the family. And you had a, a Congressman Monaghan at some point say, you keep doing all this stuff, law of unexpected outcomes. Then we move forward to 94, Joe Biden in Congress saying, well, there's a group of people, we just need to lock them up. I don't care what happened to them. I don't care about their trauma. I don't care why they act like that. Lock them up. Further right. to the family, to our morals, our principles. Take the church out. Take God out. Not God never really, he's there. God is seeing, but push God away from you. So all of this godly activity brought us to where in the, in the last administration, pushing abortion and breaking up the family and letting kids do what they want to do, don't take away parental rights, all that. So then you have a man, Donald Trump, under God. Don't worship me, worship God. Don't worship me, I'm gonna help. So here we are, promises made, promises kept in every area we just named. The yeah. farmers fought back, thank God. So they're ready. And they're now doing this wonderful program guided by the president and who's guided by God. So it's very important. We are have returned. We're returning to God, Second Chronicles 7, 14. But we have to hold. That's why faith is rising. Faith is strong. Hope is alive. Love never fails. And as we hold on to all of those truths and we see these promises made and promises kept, I don't know if we have time to deal with this today, maybe later, but voter fraud, because sometimes as Christians, we can be very pious and we would never do anything like that. So we don't want to know that it exists. But President Trump, the other day, he says, I think he says 7 million ballots were mailed somewhere in some state to uh, illegal immigrants and stuff like that, dead people voting, all of that. And President Trump says no. So we have to be alert, awake. We need to vote ourselves but we need to be aware of that type of activity. Yeah, we, we just saw a case in Philadelphia. It was an election fraud case. The man pled guilty. He was a judge. 
and obviously yeah. and a Democrat. And he was involved in this election fraud case. And you're seeing the ballot harvesting happening in, in, in states like California. And, you know, they're obviously trying to push it in Nevada. These Democrats will stop at no end to damage the election integrity. They have illegal immigrants, all types of things. So, and then you close the churches so the churches don't have the ballots to teach the word of God and just say register to vote. And not, not saying who to vote for, but just vote according to the word of God. Right. And that's why... I down because the churches can educate and pass out ballots too. Well, even think about everything Alveda just said. So taking prayer out of school, what did President Trump did? He reissued guidance and he said, it is our constitutional right to pray in school, abortion. What did he do? Most pro-life president, March for Life, defunding Planned Parenthood, uh, Mexico City, $9 billion of foreign tax. I mean, we could go on and on about that. Strengthening the family, continually doing that. Farmers, everything you just mentioned, he brought solution to in three years of problems we've been struggling with for 30 years. Yeah. 40, actually. Uh, see, <laughs> let me ask you a quick question. We have this bill going through the House of Representatives that is being championed by none other than Speaker Nancy Pelosi and her fellow Democrat friends. So parts of this bill, it's, an eight, it's a 1,800 page bill, $3 trillion, an additional $3 trillion, with no good faith cooperation with Republicans. Even some of the, the Democrats who are in Trump districts won't even support the bill. But it has in the bill, the door for taxpayer, opening the door for taxpayer funding to go to Planned Parenthood and other abortion providers. Because for Nancy Pelosi, Pelosi, abortion, that goes kind of together, actually. I kind of like. I know, that's funny. That was, that was, that's, that's, I got to use that one. Nancy Pelosi has been such an advocate for abortions that they believe that Planned Parenthood is an essential business and an essential service. Tell us how it's possible. Explain to us how it's possible that these Democrat party, the party of Joe Biden, are willing to use the global coronavirus pandemic to subsidize the killing of the unborn. Isn't it? I don't know if anybody can explain it, Mercedes, because it really, it's evil. Yeah. They're using their evil agenda to negotiate when lives are on the line. And there are no words for that. It, I think America sees what it is and they saw her true colors. They're seeing the democratic true colors that they'll use these social issues at, um, you know, at the lives of many of Americans. Instead of getting working together, coming together, getting the job done. Um, and it's like, as you said, President Trump, he's a problem solver. He's seen, just as all these ladies mentioned, he's seen these problems and just in sh three short years, he's had many solutions for all of them. But what Nancy Pelosi does is, they're not gonna give a deal unless you give something back to me. That's right. And, what we teach our children. I have a six-year-old and a three-year-old. That's not what I teach my children to do, but it's an evil agenda. And to think that abortion is now health care, that's a right as a woman. I deserve that right. No way do other Americans need to be paying for women's abortions around the world. It's a genocide. And I do think with what President Trump has done, with his stand on pro-life, going to the March for Life. I was there this year. I asked my dad to come with me. He marched with me. I was so inspired by this younger generation that knows truth. They know the science behind it and they have grace to do it. And they're taking a stand, they're marching up Capitol Hill. And I truly believe in a life, in this lifetime, I never thought it possible, I do now, that we might see a reverse way to overturn, not just to be illegal, but to be unthinkable. Just as we saw in the civil rights movement, that segregation, that's just unthinkable. That abortion one day will be unthinkable. And that will be because he has plowed the way. And that's this right. next generation can do it. I want to, Dr. King, just to give us a brief response. I know this is an issue that's very close to your heart. This is says something very important that people just don't hear enough of. Yes, abortion kills a baby. And that's wrong. That's a human being, just like we are. Abortion is not health care. Abortion kills women by the hundreds. And now it's being revealed by the thousands. 
A lot of them with sepsis, bleeding in the process, different things develop later. And then the trauma, Paula talked about trauma, there's mental and emotional trauma. I actually experienced abortions in my life and I did repent and the Lord has healed me. But my body suffered. And a few of those things are still, I have to really work on nutrition and a lot of other things to make this old body keep working because of things that those abortions did to me. So I lost the children, but the abortions actually hurt me physically, mentally, my soul, and uh, spirit and body. Dr. Uh, Pastor White, just, uh, just let's get a quick reaction before we go to break. You know, I think, again, uh, in terms of this bill that Nancy Pelosi is, is pushing forward. Well, again, and Nancy is showing who she is and that they're such extremists. There is no, uh, I've always been pro-life. I got pregnant out of wedlock at 18 years old. At a Planned Parenthood, found out I was pregnant. They said, what do you want to do? And I just looked at them and I was like, what do you mean? What am I going to do? Of course, I kept my wonderful son, who's 34 years old now. And um, as a pastor, and I think this is important to echo what Alvita said, we see the trauma effects of people who have those deep scars from, and there's no condemnation. God is a loving God. He's a gracious God. He's a merciful God that's here for you. If you've had an abortion, that if you went, what what did I do? Because there is so much impact. And, and Nancy it just has such disregard for all life that you can execute a child. I mean, how unthinkable is this that not at nine months after that baby comes out, oh, do, do you want it? Do you not execute it and to pay for that with taxpayer dollars? And is she thinking really about that young girl like myself? What would I do without my two beautiful grandchildren or my son? Is she thinking about the trauma? No, she's thinking about her political agenda and it is evil and it is wrong. And may, may we wake up to really look in, and see the, the true picture of what we're dealing with. And Nancy's not gonna stop at anything until the people vote her out. There is no question, you're absolutely right. And the Nancy Pelosi direction that they, she wants to take this country is the same direction that Joe Biden will take this country. He will be a champion for late term abortion. He will not be supportive of women's health. And at the end of the day, it's been President Trump who has really stood strong in fighting for the for the unborn and for promoting the culture of life in America. We're going to take one final break. This is Faith in America. Stay with us. America is being threatened by an invisible but deadly enemy. President Trump is leading an unprecedented response to this threat, making the tough call early by banning travel from China and coronavirus epicenters, declaring a national emergency, mobilizing scientists, doctors and nurses to treat patients and find a cure, testing more people than any other country, investing billions of dollars to help develop a vaccine. And President Trump is putting American workers and families first by increasing unemployment insurance, providing paid sick leave, fighting for direct checks to families, and helping small businesses survive. Together, we will defeat this pandemic and emerge safer, stronger, and healthier than ever. Because we are America, the greatest country on Earth. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. A bull in a china shop, changing Washington. It takes a Donald Trump to demand truth from China. Shut down foreign travel. Get ventilators and tests now. Raise unemployment benefits. Cash relief to families. Washington's come to that. President Trump's not always polite. Mr. Nice Guy won't cut it. He does it his way, not the Washington way. But Donald Trump gets it done. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Welcome back to Faith in America. My name is Mercedes Schlapp. Let's get right to it. Dr. King, we're going through this coronavirus pandemic. How are you encouraging others to remain steadfast in their faith? God blessed me right in the middle of the pandemic to start a new online TV show, Pro-Life Praise, 
variety show on endabortion.tv. It's not just about abortion. It has all things spirit, soul, and body, cooking, exercise, you name it. And yet the main message during COVID-19 is to be prayerful, to be faithful. Don't be fearful. Be prayerful. Don't be fearful or tearful. Be prayer, prayerful. Pray. Don't panic. Faith is very strong. Faith works by love and hope has to be among us. And so I'm encouraging people. You can watch it on Wednesdays at 3.30 in the afternoon and 8 p.m. or on YouTube and places like that. Pro-Life Praise Variety Show. And so we've encouraged people because we know even with COVID-19, the difference between people getting out of the hospital and off the respirator and not sometimes was they were afraid. They were alone. They were scared. And so comfort, pray. We pray for those who've experienced loss. We thank God for those who have recovered. And we can do this together. And we really do thank God for our president. And I thank God for each of you as well. Cece, let me turn to you. You have a podcast right now and you're reaching out to moms. How are you keeping, please keep our spirits high. It is so tough right now trying to homeschool the kids, trying to, you know, if, you wor if you're working at the ho out of home, it's, it's tough. So what's your message to moms out there? Yeah, I have a podca podcast and it's a fearless faith and a compromising culture. And we talk about all kinds of issues because um, these aren't political issues that our world is facing. They're biblical issues and it starts with the heart. But as we have faced this time of uncertainty and women and mothers, we've taken on new roles and trying to do it all at once. It's, uh, it's been pretty difficult. But the scripture says that God's word will revive us in Psalm 119. And it's God's word and God's word only will be the solid rock we stand on to face the storms of life, whether it's political storms, whether it's this pandemic or personal issues that we're facing. But I want women, I want moms to know that God created us not to be fearful, but to be strong, to courageous and brave as evangelicals, but also Americans, that we don't retreat. But in Daniel, it says those who know their God will be able to stand in strength and take action. And on the podcast, I want you to know your God so that we can uh, face these days, these political days we have, and these days as Americans that we have ahead of us. And I hope that's an encouragement to women and moms. I am taking notes as we speak. I'm going to have a great conversation with my kids about this as well. Pastor White, President Trump and his administration have been tackling the issue of mental health during the coronavirus pandemic. We've seen First Lady Melania Trump, Second Lady uh, Karen Pence uh, launched the Prevents uh, program to encourage Americans to take care of their mental health. Uh, walk us through what this, uh, what this Prevents program is doing. Well, three years ago, President Trump did an initiative on Prevents, recognizing that our veterans were most vulnerable, that the suicide rate was astronomically much higher than the average person. And so he, he initially launched it for our veterans. During COVID-19, they put full force behind it because it was getting ready to go into a full force launch. We hit COVID-19 and then Second Lady and First Lady truly got behind us. First Lady putting out materials through her Be Best program for children, how we emotionally and mentally and physically take care of them. Of course, they've been on the line with all governors helping provide mental health care. Second lady with the uh, deputy assistant of the interior department saying it's good to get out and, and doing stuff for like take a walk or help, you know, just get out. And I want people to know right now, so they, they have really uh, tackled this. I heard Kellyanne Conway recently on talking about how we've had more suicide in California and then we have deaths. We've had a few uh, over a few thousand, 3,000 deaths, which is horrific uh, uh, due to COVID, but we've had over 4,000 uh, suicides. And I just saw a clip from Walnut Creek, um, California, outside the Bay Area that said it's mostly young people in their 20s that feel so hopeless and helpless. And I just have to do this, Mercedes, because we know there's an uptick in anxiety and fear and loneliness and trauma. The whole world has just faced trauma. And if you feel lost right now, and if you feel maybe just tuned in to even make fun of the faith, or you're going, I'm not really on Trump's side, or I don't want to know, I'm not sure, but you just happen to watch. I want you to know God is here for you. And there is no 
depth or there is nothing you're going through that is too deep that God cannot bring you out of. And people, when they feel hopeless, that when they get in these, what is called a baseline, as I mentioned earlier, my father committed suicide when I was five years old, not because he was a bad person, because he saw no way out. And there is a way out. And his name is God. And I don't care how far you feel in, in being lost or alone. Know that God loves you and he uses people. And God can send one person into your life to shift everything. Know that you're valuable, that you're worthy, and that you are loved. And our administration is doing everything they can do to get that message in very tangible ways to help people during these very real struggles. Let's finish off with just a quick 20 second final thoughts for our viewers. Uh, Dr. King, I'll start with you. Fear not, have faith in God. We don't worship government, we worship God. Pray and keep moving forward. Just beautiful. Sissy. Oh, thank you, ladies, for such a wonderful day. I love talking about this, how thankful we are, and just encouraging people to pray for our president. This is why elections matter. We need men and women on the local state levels and the president who will protect religious freedom, who will be problem solvers and, and always know who we worship. And that's God, that we need more prayer and not less. Pastor White, do you want to finish, finish this off our wonderful show with a, with a prayer? I'd love to. And I would add faith without action and works is dead. So we've got to do something, guys. We have to get out. We have to register voters. There are over 20 million evangelical voters that are not registered. And you are the difference maker. More than this broadcast, more than anything, you know, talk to your neighbors, talk to your friends, share with them some of the information you got today and have an honest open discussion about the future, about the word of God. I know people try to go, oh, politics and religion, but both impact your life tremendously. And I like to just say, have a talk about faith and just look, this is what President Trump stands for. This is what Joe Biden stands for and help them make sure that they don't sit at home. November is going to be our most important month. Pray and do. Father, I just thank you so much that you will wrap your arms of love around each and every one of us. We pray for the families that have lost loved ones. We ask that you would just hold them so tight and that your love would consume them. We cast all our cares upon you, knowing that you care for us according to Philippians 4, 6, and 7, that when we let our anxieties, our worries be made known to you, then the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, will keep our heart and mind through Christ Jesus. We pray for wisdom and protection ahead of protection around our president. Surround him with godly counsel. Let him walk in righteousness, God, for you said in Psalm 33 that blessed is the nation who calls you Lord. So we make these declarations and decrees and according to Job 22 verse 28, it will be established in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Ladies, this has been just a spectacular show. We thank you for your time. We thank you for opening up your hearts uh, to us. But I have to say, like Pastor White mentioned, this is about reelecting President Donald J. Trump in November. We know early voting starts in, in a lot of these states, and we need all of you to get involved. It is your voices, it is your strength, it is your faith who will help us get across the finish line and ensure that President Trump continues to lead our nation. But there's a couple things I need y'all to do out there. One is download our new groundbreaking Trump 2020 app. You can download that on Apple and Android, or you can stay in contact with us by texting STAND, S-T-A-N-D, at 88022. That's 88022. We want you to get involved. Go to our website to volunteer armyfortrump.com. Great place to be able to become part of this incredible movement. We need all of you to stay active, get involved, and help us get President Trump reelected. I want to thank all my special guests tonight. This is Mercedes Schlapp for Faith in America on Team Trump Online. God bless you. God bless our great nation. And God bless President Donald J. Trump. Thank you.